All right, if you've ever tried to create a sloped radius curb and didn't know how, had to find a difficult, a lot of trial and error, or, uh, maybe you just gave up, uh, this video might help you in the future. So this is a battered curb form uh, that's on a radius. Uh, it could be called sloped curb form, battered curb form, or a radius curb form that's got a slope, right? And in this case, we got a six inch tall curb and a one inch per six pitch. So one and six is the slope. Uh, when you do the slopes, like uh, written down two to one, right, would be two run, one rise, kind of backwards then. But if you did a one divided by two, it would be your tangent. So, but, so in this case, I'm going to say six to one, six rise to one. I mean, uh, one to six, one run to six rise, right? And let's see. So you have to calculate the radius, or measure it, field measure it, and calculate it, or you know, it's provided for you anyways. It's a uh, did a, have four ways to find the radius of a, a, a an existing radius. So if it's existing and you got to connect a tangent line to a tangent line, you can calculate the radius. You know the pitch. The anyway. So here we go. We got. Let's just say it's provided for us. It's an eighty-four foot inch radius to the top, right to this point right here. Oh, it's in 3D, it's not going to show up. All right. I have had it be able to. So there's a setting in here that's not allowing the two the, the lines to show the thickness. I think it's because of the, uh, I'm in a different mode right here in the shading. If it was in hidden lines, I think they'd show up. So let's see. So we've got 84. So we know that the pitch is, uh, I think, uh, V right here, point relative. Negative, uh, t -t 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 negative six, tab, and then on the Z, we're gonna go one, enter, and that doesn't look like it's pitched, but I think it is. Nope, maybe not. Tab, negative six, tab one. That's interesting, it sure doesn't look like it's sloped, right? No, it's not. Let's just do this then. Make sure that's one. And we'll move it over. Nope. Oh, that's why I was in the uh, ortho mode. Still in ortho mode. Seems like I should be able to override that in any way. Make sure, yep, so that's our that's our curb. It still doesn't look right. This is six inches tall. That should be six point, it was awfully, that's incorrect. Uh, oh yeah, because I didn't, <laughs> let's just go back time. Look, the point relative, tab, negative six, tab one, enter, enter. So there's our pitch for the curb. And there's a radius and it's the top point, like I said. So what we need to do is figure out what's the cone radius. So we're going to create a cone. Let's go into two, to 2D. And then I've got it here already somewhere. There you go. Nice and big over here. Second time I did this because the first time it was pretty long winded. It's hard to know what to explain. All right, and so here's how we're gonna calculate this cone. What we're looking for is this radius, right? Uh, and we're gonna go, let's get some tolerance in there. So 510.95, which seems like a huge number, for, but 
this is in inches, so uh, if we did it, so anyway, so that's the one we're looking for. We don't know that. Let's just delete it. You have the pitch here, and it's one. And then the height is six. All right, so it, and they, there's similar triangles, the big long one, the big tall one here, and this one. So six is to one, so let's just do like this. Six is to one. Well, that would give us the height here. What we're looking for is the diagonal length, right? So let's get rid of that. And go uh, tools, calculator, square root of, we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem of one squared, which is just one, plus six squared, which is 36. Copy that. Control C. Compute. Control V. Equal. I put that here. Enter. So there's our diagonal. So we're going to take that diagonal. The diagonal here is to one, as the di big diagonal is to eighty-four. So let's do uh, uh, it'd be eighty-four times point or six point zero eight two. So let's do that. I'm not going to show the algebra. Just uh, it's the same. It's a ratio. Six is to one is x is to eighty-four, and if x is on top. Take the as the eighty-four is on the bottom and multiply it by the whatever we had for the fraction there, which is six over one. So times 84 and there you go 510.95 so let's do this just take this control W and let's make it bigger Five eleven format two two so we have there you go all right I don't know that I showed that. 6.082, times 84. Control C, compute, control V, equal. And I paste that down there. That's how you get the, the radius, control R. And then, that's for the radius. That's like radius one, right? This was the, the this is the diagonal there, right there. get the diagonal there and then we would just go like this so that 510 control C we just do an offset uh, plus 6.08 if you're going to do a 28 you're going to do a program you would be doing this right control V equals and then there you'd have your second radius right All right, and then uh, this is pretty small actually. It, if it was me, I wouldn't I wouldn't calculate the the long radius. To, you know, like I wouldn't uh, do the chord risers. Uh, I would just put a sheet of plywood down. Let's go through that. Put a sheet of plywood down and swing that radius. So point relative forty eight uh, ninety six tab forty eight. Enter. There's our sheet of plywood. And then our radius, the first radius is 
interesting. Yeah. Control C. And then I'm going to go here, swing an arc from the plywood. Control V. You're looking for the center, the Same thing from the other side. Where those intersect, that would be your center right there. Enter, and then you'd swing your arc from there. And that's the same length. All right, there you go. All right, there's your arc. Control M, and then if they wanted the second one, you would do that. Uh, control C would be this dimension right here. All right, copy that. Control C, Control M. There's your second radius. Trim it out. And I don't know what's the difference between this one. Let's see. Control C, Control V. If you're cutting this out of plywood, Control oh, Control V. Nope. Let's see. Control H, Control C, Control V. Yeah, that doesn't look like there's any kind of overlap at all. There should be. I think I'm doing something wrong. Control H, Control C, Control V, because those are definitely not the same radius. Yeah, so uh, the difference here, Control K to Control K. It's weird that I'm getting there. You go F four, F four, and text precision got screwed up in there. It keeps resetting. So let's go to hundredths of an inch or three hundredths of an inch. That is pretty small. I think I would just take that first template and then overlap it, overlap it, overlap it. So you could just repeat the uh, template and not have any leftover. Sometimes if it's a very tight core, tight circle, the inside and the outside here are quite different. And then you have to gap, uh, you have to spread them out a little bit, cut the outside and then cut another one for the inside here. I think I would just cut them uh, one after another if I had a lot of radius to do. Of the same uh, dimension so hope that helps in your career and thanks for watching